All right, everybody, welcome back to Bee Mother Reviews. And today we have hailing from parts unknown, weighing in at 275 pounds. This is, of course, wrestling icon, the Ultimate Warrior. And the statue is made by PCS Collectibles. And back when they revealed they had the WWE line, this guy was automatically right at the top of my personal wish list for the line. And he just so happened to be revealed in the very first teaser. And they just showed his right arm, but you could see the armband and the tassel and you knew immediately who it was. So I was jacked up right from the start. Now I got a chance to see the prototype on display at New York Comic Con in 2018 and it looked glorious. I loved it. But as we all know, the prototype looking amazing does not necessarily mean what shows up on your doorstep is going to look at all the same. So does this statue live up to what I saw back in New York? Let's get in the review and find out. All right, I have been a massive wrestling fan pretty much as far back as I can remember. And the Warrior has been at the top of my list of favorites for pretty much my whole life. Now, back in the Warriors days, wrestling was a little bit different. There was no Raw and there was no SmackDown. There was just the Saturday afternoon wrestling show where it was basically a glorified house show. And they trot out some random jobber that you swear they just pulled off the street from somewhere. And his sole purpose was to get annihilated by whatever superstar came out of the back. And I use the term superstar kind of loosely because you rarely got to see the elite wrestlers like Hogan or Macho Man or the Warrior. You had to see these guys in the pay-per-views. And back in those days, the only way I could see a pay-per-view was if I went down to the video store and rented it on VHS. And I would go down and rent them all. The Royal Rumble, Summer Slam, Survivor Series. I always loved those ones. And of course, WrestleMania 6, the ultimate challenge where the Warrior defeated Hulk Hogan to be the first wrestler to simultaneously hold the Intercontinental title and the heavyweight title, basically cementing his legacy as one of the greatest of all time. Nowadays, you can watch these matches pretty freely on YouTube, and I've converted my kids into big-time wrestling fans, so we sit down, we watch all these old matches with the Warrior, and it's just, it's amazing to see how mesmerized they are, just like I was back in those days. Uh, watching it through the eyes of an adult, you can kind of see how awkward the Warrior was. He wasn't the most skillful wrestler, but with him, it was all about the energy. Right from the very second his music started blaring, the crowd would go absolutely insane and he'd come sprinting out of the back. He'd start shaking the ropes. As soon as he got to the ring, he'd maybe throw down a couple clotheslines, maybe a flying shoulder block. But it wasn't until he signaled to the sky for the Gorilla Press that I would jump out of my seat. I just loved that move. And you know, it's not the flashiest move. It's not the best finisher, of course, but it was just his feet of sheer strength. He lifted his opponent above his head and dropped him to the ground behind him. It's just this symbol of dominance that he had. And I just loved it. I still get fired up to watch the Gorilla Press to this day. Now the Warriors life outside of the ring uh, wasn't always as glamorous. He was often feuding with Vince McMahon over money and royalty fees and all that kind of stuff. And you know he would get suspended or he'd quit and he'd disappear for years at a time. And you know, back in those days, there was no internet. So, you know, if your friend tells you that his cousin's best friend's uncle's girlfriend works for the WWE and she heard that the warrior was dead, well, it must be true. So back in those days, there was this real urban legend that would go around that the warrior was dead. And I swear I believed it right up until he reappeared in 2014 at this Hall of Fame induction. And I remember hearing about this and... I went home and I was I was jacked up. I told my wife, I was like, honey, you're not going to believe this. The Ultimate Warrior, he's alive. And she's like, oh, yeah, yeah, honey, that, that's great. That's great. And, uh, you know, literally days later, he actually did die. So it was this real roller coaster of emotions at this time, um, you know, to, to get this childhood hero back and then ripped away in such a short amount of time. But, you know, for presenting like such a wild and crazy sort of brutish character, the warrior would sometimes drop these little pearls of inspirational wisdom. And, you know, to paraphrase his Hall of Fame induction speech, he says, if what a man did in life 
causes the blood to pulse through others and causes them to believe in something larger than life, then his essence and his spirit will live on in the stories that those people tell and he will become immortalized. And this warrior, that really has rang true because as I said, I've passed the legend of the warrior on to my kids and maybe someday they'll pass it on to theirs. Uh, and now the warrior has become immortalized not only in story, but in statue form. And we have it here from PCS Collectibles. Now, can this live up to the legend of the Ultimate Warrior? Let's talk about sculpt and design next. All right, so this statue was sculpted by a guy named Hossein Deba. Now, I sincerely apologize if I'm mispronouncing that name, but this guy does absolutely incredible work. You should go check out his art station page and his Instagram page. It's absolutely incredible what he's doing. And uh, he had already done some work for WWE, some digital sculpt work for them. And that's how he kind of became involved in this project with PCS. And he's actually done all three statues in the line so far, which of course, uh, they did the Nature Boy Ric Flair and, and also the most electrifying athlete in sports entertainment, The Rock, who looks absolutely incredible. It's one of the best likenesses I've ever seen. And so, um, you know, this statue here, I mean, it's a fairly simple design and most of them are pretty simple in the line. Let's take a look at the base first. It's just a, a plain black pedestal and you got the steel checker plate floor here under his feet. Uh, one thing to note about the base is they changed up the logo from what was shown during pre-order. Originally it was you know, this logo here where you see the, the letters you know, in the shape of his face paint. Um, but they changed it and I asked the question in the Facebook group uh, about that. And they said, well, it was uh, directed by the licensor. Um, they wanted them to use a more official Ultimate Warrior logo. And, you know, I'll take that for face value. Uh, to a degree because I can't see any other reason why they would change it. The only problem is I've never seen this used as an Ultimate Warrior logo like ever. It's always been this one here. Uh, so, you know, hey, it is what it is. If, if the statue was shown like this from the start, I still would have bought it. So I'm not going to complain too much because really this is why I bought the statue right here. And, uh, you know, back in the day of the Warrior, most wrestlers were not exactly primely conditioned athletes, but the warrior, I mean, he was as about as close to a real life superhero as you could get. And you can see his physique here. You know, he is jacked up. You can see all the muscles and veins rippling through his body. And I uh, you know this is a classic warrior pose. You'd often see him doing this exact pose uh, on a lot of the promotional images or the box art for the, the, the pay-per-views or you know in his backstage interviews and things so it's tough to complain about their choice of pose it look, does look very very good i think from you know this front angle uh, but i find that you know from the side here it looks a little bit awkward um, but you know i think most people are going to display it you know in this sort of range here now if i had my choice if i could choose any pose it would have been this one here on this shirt with his arms up to the sky you know signaling for the gorilla press of course but Again, this is a pretty classic pose, so tough to complain about it. You know, the weak part about this sculpt for me is the hair. Uh, I think they've done about as well as they can uh, replicating that hairspray uh, look that he's was known for in the early 90s. Um, you know, it looks okay. Uh, and again, about probably as good as you could probably do or expect for that type of hairdo. Um, where this statue really shines for me in the sculpt department is the skin texture. Um, I don't know exactly the technique. I don't know what they're doing differently, uh, but it looks insanely realistic. It's just, it's probably the most realistic skin texturing I've ever seen on any statue. Um, so I don't know what they're doing, but keep it up because it looks absolutely amazing. Um, you know, this warrior, like I said, it's the classic pose for the character. He's got the muscles, you know, bulging everywhere. I mean, it's what you'd want and expect from a warrior statue. So they did a great job here. All right, let's move on and talk about paint on this statue. Now for me, success or failure of the paint job was gonna come down to two things. Number one, the face paint. It had to be really clean and crisp. And I think they've done a really nice job here. 
Uh, I'm not sure if they've used a stencil or, or maybe some kind of sticker or something over his face. But whatever they did, it looks really, really good. It's clean. It's crisp. It's got those vibrant warrior colors. Um, it's straight, you know, a line on his face. So they did a really nice job there. Um, so that's one box checked. The next one was going to be the skin tones. And, you know, it looked fantastic on that prototype that I saw. Uh, but again, producing that in the factories was going to be the big challenge for this piece. And this statue is almost all skin. So it was going to really decide whether this statue worked or not. Now wrestlers, you know, they don't exactly have a natural skin color. A lot of them anyways, they have this really almost reddish orangey tan. And so reproducing that look was going to be tough. But I think they've done a nice job here. That He's got this nice tanned skin tone. And the shaded areas, they've used a sort of a reddish color to give them that wrestler tan look. I think they've done a tremendous job with the skin tones. And uh, it really makes me confident in the next ones down the line. You know, Ric Flair, as I mentioned, The Rock. Um, you know, seeing this, I think they can pull it off. So ultimately, I think it's a pretty big success there. Now, I mentioned the colors. They've gone with the classic warrior colors of, you know, the orange, the purple, the green. So that was a great choice. Um, you know, if there's one weak spot on this statue with regards to paint, it's again the hair, uh, the color. You know, it's kind of a grayish color almost. It doesn't really look like the blonde color that he had or the brown. Um, it's a little messy in spots. I found a few brush bristles in there, which sounds bad, but that actually happens a lot more often than you think if you look hard enough on your statues. Um, and there's also a few globby areas. So the hair, you know, I'd say it's passable. Um, so it's okay in that way. But the rest of the statue, I'd have to say, really did turn out well. Okay, so production quality on this statue. There's really not a lot to go through. It's a pretty basic statue. Essentially comes in two pieces. You got the base and then you got the body that's all one piece and he fits into the base with a peg under his right foot. Now the tassels on his arms and legs are separate pieces that just plug into little holes on the back there. One thing to note about the tassels is they are packed into the underside of the top piece of foam. Now when I unboxed this guy, I pulled that lid off and I set it down and the top was facing up. So I was looking everywhere for these tassels and I was literally sitting down to my computer about to type an email to Sideshow and get some replacements uh, when I realized, hey, maybe I should flip that over. And that's of course where they are. So don't make the same mistake I did. They are there. Now, uh, the statue itself weighs about 14 pounds, so it feels pretty good. Uh, it's about 25 inches tall. The warrior himself is about 18 and a half inches tall. You can see he's bulky and beefy, just like you'd want him to be. So it's a pretty good size statue. It's gonna look great on display, but what I really like about it is it's a very manageable sized base. You know, this guy's gonna be fairly easy to fit into most displays, and for me personally, that is huge news because I am basically clean out of space. I need statues that are easy to display. And so far, all of them in the line are the same way. Um, so overall, this statue, I have to say, PCS did a really nice job with this production. It turned out very, very nice. All right, it's time to wrap up this review of the Ultimate Warrior from PCS Collectibles. Just an absolute legendary figure from my childhood and now of my kids' childhood as well. They've become big fans and I'm sure for most of you watching, he was also a legend for you as well. And when I saw this statue in New York a couple years ago, you know, the success of it was going to come down to three things for me. Number one, the skin texture. Number two, the skin tones. I mean, there's a lot of skin on this guy, so those two really had to turn out. And number three, the iconic face paint. And I think that they hit the mark on all three counts. The skin texture is maybe the most realistic I've seen on a production piece to date. The skin tones, I think they've given him that nice tan skin color with the shaded areas look a little bit of a hint of red in there for that almost unnatural looking uh, wrestler tan. Um, and the face paint is clean, it's crisp, and it looks great. So 
Overall, I think it's a fantastic piece from PCS. It's not a perfect piece. I mentioned the hair a couple times. You know, the paint, especially there, could have been better. You know, the pose, even though it's a classic warrior pose, doesn't look good from all angles. I think it looks a little bit awkward from, from angles like this. Uh, but overall, as I said, I think the legend of the warrior lives on in this piece here. Uh, so hopefully all you warriors watching enjoyed the review. Stay tuned to the channel because there's always more to come. And we'll talk to you guys soon.